Hi everyone, I'm Josh and this is Josh Wright Piano TV. Today I wanted to share with you a new tip that I discovered yesterday teaching a lesson to uh, my student Jim. He is a physics professor at a pretty renowned university and um, really awesome guy. I love teaching him. Good pianist uh, and he always comes with a lot of uh, great questions for discussion. Um, he's playing the uh, Bach French Suite right now, number four. Uh, and the air from that, and forgive me, I'm just pulling this out of my memory here. I've never played it. Um. Something like that. Anyway, he was saying, you know, a lot of times when I'm doing these crosses or doing different figures, my hands get uh, uneven. Do you have any tips for gaining that evenness? And I think I posted a video about a year ago that we talked a lot about that. I dedicated the video to him as well. But we discovered another thing that I wanted to share today. And it just has to do with shifting your focus. And it will pay huge dividends. I remember even in my early 20s, after I'd won international competitions and uh, you know, finishing up my masters, I still remember, I was a little self-conscious about certain scales sometimes when I, in pieces, and they sounded fine. Um, but like they felt not great and I remember it was because I was doing exactly what um, I was talking to Jim about the other day is I was focusing on the cross now when we focus on crosses what I mean by a cross is There switching positions. So here's a position. Here's a position a position basically just means you don't have to you know shift your hand at all It's just right there, but then shifting and students always focus on those shifts. They always, or the, the crosses, excuse me. They just focus on that cross right there. What ends up happening is two things. The first thing is they will usually tense up a little bit and say, oh, kill me, here's the cross. And they have a heavy thumb. That's the first thing I see a lot. Second of all, when they anticipate the cross, what ends up happening is they rush the stuff before. I mean, Yes, if you're a spiritual person, you believe we're spiritual beings. If you're an atheist, you believe we're just animals. But regardless, you know, regardless of your spiritual belief systems, we still do have mammal instincts. We have this fight or flight response within us. If we're getting chased by a bear, we're going to be able to run faster than we usually do. And the same thing goes with piano. And the fight or flight response for piano is like the worst thing ever because we're dealing with these micro movements. The thing that a lot of people do when they're anticipating a cross, they actually rush the stuff before as a subconscious, I believe it's subconscious because I don't think anyone would do this on purpose, but it's a subconscious way of saying, I've got to get through this material quickly so that I can have plenty of time to do that cross. Now we, we all know that's counterintuitive because we want our scale to sound even, but what, what ends up happening is people go like that. And he said, my student Jim, he's like, I'm just, you know, I can play all this difficult material, but sometimes I'm terrified of a C major scale. And he's like, especially C major, you know, a lot of times B major or uh, scales, even with black keys, kind of give you something to hold on to, like a little, like if you're rock climbing, it's like a, a wall hold that you can grab onto, those black keys. But being on all the whites, do you have any tips on how to get that more even? I have two things that I want to share today. Um, the first is, I want you to think of two things. First of all, I was actually teaching another student, Jim, uh, same name actually, funny enough, uh, in New York this morning, and um, he's just starting out, just a beginner, but a really awesome guy, doing great, and he was, we were going over scales for the first time, and um, he said, now, when I get to my next position, do I shift my hand up here, or do I, you know, like, pull that thumb under really hard. I was like, you want a little bit of both. You don't want a, a hard thumb under. And wow, that's probably gonna cause a whole mess of comments in the, or yeah, in the comments section below. A lot of people, thumb under is this big controversy. Go watch any great pianist. They do a little bit of thumb under. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, you're just not gonna be able to play scales super fast without a little bit of thumb under. But at the same time, I was telling him something that was kind of interesting. Um, he said, he asked this question. I said, if I'm playing a scale slowly, you'll see a little bit more rotation. A little more movement in the hand. 
because the scale is moving slowly. When momentum builds up and there is less time spent on each key, you're not going to hear those crosses as much. So instead of thinking of just focusing on that cross, I want you to think of shifting your hand as well as the uh, speed of the scale increases. So what I mean by that is, is as you get faster, you're going to need almost no thumb under technique uh, because the momentum of the keys, when you're going max tempo, like I always use this example, Murray Pry, because it changed my life. It was Murray Pry uh, playing uh, Mozart E flat major concerto. <laughs> It's just gorgeous and I was like how does he do that I was nine when I was listening to that and I was playing that it was my first ever concerto that I played and I was playing it super slow um, but as I got more and more into my teen years I kept asking myself how is he doing that and basically you can watch my pearly sound video and just type in Josh Wright pearly sound it'll go more into detail about that but basically he it comes down to just doing a finger staccato in a fast tempo and that gets you that speed. So you need less crosses and more shifting as you get higher speeds. When you're going really slow, you need pretty much no shifting because it's all happening just within the hand there. So getting back to my student, um, the physics professor, playing the Bach uh, English Suite number four, the air, I said, you need to focus on shifting and just gently crossing under to get into that new position. Now, you might be thinking, what What are you talking about? You just told us you shift as you get faster and you do cross. But what I'm saying is everyone focuses on that shift, that, or that cross. They go, and if you just think, hey, I'm just gonna hang out in this position. And then when it's time, I will shift into this next position. Will that require a slight cross just to make this transition smoother? Sure. But then I just go into this position. Okay, so it's just here, lift, here, okay? A little less of a pause, a little tiny thumb under. Now a little more thumb under, but... And pretty soon... You'll get these buttery smooth scales by focusing on, hey, I'm just thinking about going to the three. And then when the time is right, I shift into this next position. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one. Versus one, two, oh shoot, kill me now. My cross is coming up. And then what most students do is they they contort their hand in all sorts of ways. I've seen it all. It's just crazy. People wing out their elbow. They go up with their wrist. They smash that thumb. Just relax. Just the, If I asked you to play this, fine. What about this? Fine, that's great. Now, all I want you to do is this. Just that slight connection between the two. But I want you to keep thinking in terms of those positions. I do not want you focusing on the cross. I want you thinking this position, and then just a smooth transition to the next one. And then a smooth transition to the next one. Okay, I'm gonna grab my score here. I uh, forgot to grab this before the video started, but. This is the French suite number four, and I want to go over this little extra tip for you. This is dangerous advice, I gotta tell you. <laughs> this is exactly what I tell my students not to do, but I wanna reference an old video. Uh, sorry, my beginning students. This is what I tell my beginning students to not do. This can help tremendously uh, as you get into more advanced repertoire. And this actually was taught to me by Sergei Babayan. And you can watch my video called Wrist as the Fourth Joint. I will also link that below. Um, amazing concept. And uh, what you're going to do, he, Jim was going like this. Sorry. He just had these little bits of unevenness here or there. And he wanted just to get it here. And I said, there's this really weird technique that Babayan taught me for this Schubert. It's been forever since I played.
played it. But basically, what he taught me, he was saying, Joshua, no, it needs to be shorter. And so I did. And he's like, no, no, that's too short. Why aren't you doing what I ask? Or something funny. He's hilarious. I love uh, Sergei Babayan. He's one of my favorite people in the world. Anyway, um, he said, it has to be in the wrist, but still connected. So, like... So these little tiny wrist movements. Now, I usually avoid this because a lot of, especially little kids, because they just don't have a lot of weight behind them, they go to play their scales. That's awful. You don't want to teach that. You want to teach finger strength with those scales. But sometimes to get that little more pointed um, sound with your scales, uh, coupled with our new little evenness technique, you just do. Start reading here. So it's just this little, just this little tiny wrist bounce. Yeah. And that really helped uh, my student as well. I was just like, just do these little tiny bounces. You have to be very careful because you can start just playing like vertically and pow and too loud. This this can be done piano. Okay, so now horrible. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> So any of these little shifts, Jim and I went over here, then I'm just going to shift my hand up and then shift to there, shift. Each time it crossed, I'm not thinking, uh, I'm thinking shift into that next position. And coupled with this little tiny bit of bouncing, so when you're first, like, not first starting, because I already told you I don't do it with beginners, but when you're having trouble with this, with the scale becoming mushy or kind of like spaghetti, like, you may want to just try this. A little wrist bounce. What that'll do, that'll coordinate your finger strength back down in the key. You'll feel, dum -bum 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 -bum. it'll feel really good. And then you can get rid of that as you increase your speed. Because if I was playing this air, you know, if I was playing it really fast, I wouldn't be doing any of that wrist. It has to be kind of like a medium tempo uh, piece. Okay. Anyway, um, those tips, hopefully shifting and just gently shifting into those next positions and thinking of playing evenly throughout the position, coupled with this little bit of bouncing if you're playing something like Bach or uh, Schubert or something that needs kind of in a medium, medium fast tempo, it could be a slow tempo as well, um, but needs a little more pointed sound, a little bit more direct clarity, a lot like Andras Schiff's playing. Schiff has this unbelievable quality to his Bach playing um, that's very clear um, and concise. Uh, if you want a little bit of that, you can also try the wrist bouncing exercise. Both of these are exercises. Do not let this be the end-all be-all of everything, but these are stepping stones to get those smooth scales and smooth uh, and even passages that you're after. I hope it's been helpful. If this video has helped you or if you have seen other videos that um, on my channel that you've liked, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, it helps me spread the word to more people. Um, the channel's been growing at such a great pace. I, I'm truly grateful to each of you for spreading the word about these techniques. I just want to get this info out to as many people as possible. Um, there will be a subscribe button here. You can check out all my video lessons here, and then you can keep watching more videos over here. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.